Good morning, beloveds. I, I haven't said this in a while, and I'm going to say it now, and you'll understand in just a minute. Anytime you are doing any kind of reading at all, especially if you are reading sacred literature, what I'm reading is not exactly sacred literature, but it's, you know, um, your reading is going to be changed by whatever mood you're in and whatever is going on in your life. That being said, so here's why I'm saying it, because on Tuesday I found out a friend of mine was sick and she made her transition on yesterday. And I I found out 15 minutes before I had to go do um, a recording for that will be scheduled for a later date. It's uh, something that you'll be, we'll be promoting because we're really excited about it. And it was, it was a really good interview. Uh, and I just, you know, and I found out 20 minutes before that she was gone. <clears throat> and, um, and it was fast. It was 10 months. And I guess she just didn't want to burden people because she didn't tell a whole lot of people. And I was her minister mentor. And so, you know, I kept thinking, hey, she should be coming up for ordination. And now I know why she, did, why she didn't. So, okay. So that's what's going on with me, just so you know. Um, so please, please feel free to treat for the, the family and friends of Reverend Millie. Uh, she was a wonderful, well, she is. She is a wonderful she is a wonderful person, and I read a couple of the testimonials, and she she was an exceptional an exceptional minister. Uh, but if you'd seen her life, you would have understood why. Uh, she had a lot of. She was a nurse. She was in the air force. She did a lot before she came to ministerial school. She had a whole lot of life experience to bring to being a minister. So, you know, all right. Uh, <clears throat> So I just wanted to let you know that's where I'm at, why I'm a little, <sighs> yeah. Okay, it is November 16th. Our title is The Premise of Divine Science, and our title is Ida B. Elliott, and this is published in Mind Remakes Your World, which was edited by Holmes from 1941. Mm. So, divine science is based on a belief in the omnipresence, omniscience, omnipotence, and on the action of God, one presence, knowledge, power, and action. In other words, God is all, both invisible and visible, one mind, intelligence, and substance. One mind, intelligence, and substance. One spirit, life, and law. This mind is the source of all wisdom, love, knowledge, understanding, and power. Its action is the expression of these inherencies, which people call the law of the presence. This law is also called the will of God or God in action. People are the expression of God and are forever one with its source. Their source. <clears throat> Sorry, their source. But believing in two powers, they thought themselves separated, separated from the true source and came into bondage for their false belief. Hence the basic statement, I accept the omnipresence without any reserve. Okay, so the first thing that you need to understand is divine science is, so in New Thought, there's a bunch of, we have a bunch of little branches because <laughs> we're constantly sprouting off and go, kind of going our own way. We all have the same basic idea, but we all have different ways of expressing it, which is a hallmark of um, new thought. So uh, divine science, divine science, Christian science, religious science, we're all similar. We have different founders. And actually, uh, Ernest Holmes was... Um, ordained into the minist into the ministry through divine science before he created his own organization. He was an or, uh, he was a uh, an ordained minister with divine science. Uh, that is so. It, that's one of the reasons why 
it's important for us to understand divine science because that's we that's how we came to be, you know. Um, and uh, and Christian science has a very strong influence on us as well because one of Ernest Holmes' teachers, especially, uh, I think she was his last. He was her last student. Was um, Emma Curtis Hopkins. Now Emma Curtis Hopkins was a student of Mary Baker Eddy, who is the founder of Christian Science. The, and Mary Baker Eddy went, "Well, you're getting a little too up." And Mary Baker Eddy said, "No, out." And so she just moved to another city, you know, several hours away. And as as Jesse says hung up a shingle saying she was a Christian science teacher. Mary Baker, Eddy, one, wouldn't have ever known, and two, wouldn't be able to do anything about it anyway. Because, you know, this was back in, before the turn of two centuries, because I think it was back in the 18-somethings, you know. Um, and so Ernest was one of her last students. And Ernest was, so it's, so that you see where we, we, we have these confluence of ideas. Uh, convergence of ideas and it's and it and it's incredible because Ernest Ernest didn't Ernest didn't start out to set to to create his own religion what Ernest wanted to do was he he had this really neat idea he was like you know what have you ever looked at the way Jesus prayed let's do that so he had this technique that he wanted to teach everybody and then he wanted to send them back into their own um religions because any Christian religion would benefit from this method, because it's Jesus's method of prayer, you know, that's how we came to be who we are. Uh, and divine science, it, you saw the omnipotence, omni-action, omni-presence. There's one source. There's one source. And so that last sentence, she said, we accept this without reserve. We accept this with, without reserve. Because that's the goal. That is the goal, to look around the world and see God everywhere without reserve. Um, and it's not easy. It's not easy because the material world is messy. And the material world is messy because, you know, God gave us free will. And, get, and we are at choice. And sometimes we make interesting choices. So, um, yeah. Sometimes we make interesting choices. So that's why she says, one presence, knowledge, power, and action. God is all, both invisible and visible. And that's one of those things that why we can treat in the present tense. When we do, because the steps of treatment are recognition, realizing that there is one power, realize, um, sorry, uh, unification, recognizing that we are part of that power, because that power is all that there is. Therefore, it we are part of it. You know, we flow from it. It flows through us. Uh, and then rec the realization part, that's the body of the treatment or the body of the prayer. Um, why we can say, state for a fact that whatever it is that we are treating for, we state for a fact that it exists present tense. We may not have it, but we know it exists because it exists in the mind of God. It may already exist in the visible, which is the material. But if it doesn't, that's okay. Because it already exists in the mind of God. In the invisible. Because of that omni. Everything. God is not bound by time and space. Therefore, anything that is good, that is right for us, already exists in the mind of God. Therefore, when I do the realization statement, I can state that whatever good it is that I am seeking already exists in the present tense. Because I know that it does. That's how and why we do it. And then by me stating it aloud and stating it in the present tense, I am signaling both to my subconscious and to the presence that I am ready to accept it. It's like, why do we have, God knows what we need. God knows what we want. Why do we have to ask for it? Because we're not always willing to accept what is good for us. So we've got to be willing to accept. And sometimes our good is like literally right there. And when we accept it, 
then we open like the blinders the what is it the scales fell from our eye the scales fall from our eyes and we see our good is already right there so that's the and that's the power of treatment that really is the power of treatment the last two steps in depending on who you talk to because there's uh our thanksgiving because the power of gratitude is absolutely you know science will back me up on this this uh, gratitude will um get you everywhere it's the best way to change a mood like if you're in a then you look you look for the good and you be grateful for it uh and release now um there's another we also have two more steps that we can occasionally use if we need them we we can use a denial and there was a big uh component proponent of the denials where you where when when an unbelief crops in you you deny the unbelief and a reaffirmation where you restate what you believe. Uh, and then you can, and then Jesse made a comment about somebody else having more steps. And I went, wait, we're getting to nine steps now. Um, <laughs> five steps is enough. Cause I don't even do all five steps. Um, and Ernest didn't either. And frankly, neither did Jesus. So <laughs> it's just a framework that we teach you. And once you learn the framework, you can um, move through and, and decide how you're going to do it. But the framework, it's like scaffolding. It holds the building up until the building's ready. Same with your treatment. Same with your prayer. Okay, so that is the, the power of div divine science. The premise of divine science. So it's just, it's just one of those, this is one of those little academics. But it's important to recognize what it is that we believe. And to then to really do that soul searching, do I actually believe this? And if I don't, where do I need to work on it? Where do I need to work on it? So that is the premise of divine science. And her last sentence, hence the basic statement, I accept the omnipresence without reserve. That's the mission. Absolutely. What does it mean? All the things that she said. That when I look around at all of the things that I recognize that it is God period <laughs> you know it's all god the animate the inanimate the life the the not it's all god it's all god and in the end it's going to be okay so the mission today should we choose to accept it to accept the omnipresence without any reserve and that that's going to take some work and it's and it takes work every day, which is the point of spiritual practice. You, you, you visit the spiritual practice every day. Um, and you exercise those spiritual muscles. So, uh, yeah. And then I'm about to give you a spiritual practice because the second mission I give you every day, which is the spiritual practice of self care to do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself, whatever that looks like, big, small, it doesn't matter. The point is to do it, to take care of yourself. Um, and the basic suggestions, my favorite one is the one I always start with, to take a deep breath before you speak to your speak, especially to yourself, so that you are responding, not reacting, so that what comes flying out of your mouth is truth, not, and you know what I mean. You will speak to yourself more often than you will speak to any other living being. Why not have what you say to yourself be loving, kind, and compassionate? So, um, oh, his tongue is sticking out. Oh, black cat, red towel, little pink tongue, just, <sighs> I needed that. I needed that. All right. So, uh, take a deep breath before you speak, drink, um, sorry, uh, take a walk, take a nap, take a break, which is the human version of turn yourself off, turn yourself back on, especially if anything is going all kinds of sideways. Um, and all the other loving, kind and compassion. The goal is in the end to make everything you do loving, kind and compassionate, both for yourself and for other people. And the reason, reason being, well, the main reason. The main reason you deserve your own love. You deserve your own kindness. You deserve your own compassion. You're a beloved child of God. Okay. So when the things happen 
that you can treat yourself lovingly, kindly, and compassionately. And it means when you do the hard stuff too. Like I said, I found out a friend of mine passed 20 minutes before I had to go do something. Um, and I just, I texted the, the um, Jesse and said, this happened. I'm gonna show up, but this happened. And, you know, and, and then by letting him know he could be, not that he's not always loving, kind and compassionate because he is, but then he could treat me gently in a different way than he normally does because, and you know what I mean. And so that's, that's what it is. Tell people your truth. You got to know your truth to tell people your truth. And maybe the most loving, kind and compassionate thing you can do for yourself is to figure out your truth. Figure out who you are. You know, peel back the layers of all of the nonsense that we have been told about who we are and get to know who God knows us to be. All right. Okay. Um, I, this, we never know how long we've got. Okay. As evidenced by my friend. Uh, don't save the good stuff. So when I say eat dessert first, what I'm talking about is don't save the good stuff. Burn the nice candles now before they get sticky and nasty and don't smell the way that they did when you bought them. Wear the fancy clothes. Eat the good food. Use the fancy dishware. Go out of your way to make the ordinary extraordinary a little more often. Honestly, it would be okay if every day of your life was extraordinary. Because if you if you look around and you accept the divine science pr premise, then your life is extraordinary all the time. We're just not paying attention. Uh, and I, and I, and I want to remind you again, joy is a quality of God. No matter what is going on in the world, no matter what is going on in your life, you deserve joy. Please make room for it. I, e, I looked over, I saw the blep, the, the little pink tongue sticking out of the cat. That is joy. And I needed it. The rest of the suggestions are the same basic suggestions that I always give you. Um, do something to engage your mind and your body, unless it is your day of rest. Those are important. Build them in. Drink plenty of water. Hydration is super important. Your brain works better. Your body works better. Your skin looks better when you are well hydrated. Um, drink, uh, get that early in your day bright light. It was drizzling today. So no sun. And I wasn't expecting it to be drizzling, but here we are. Uh, so artificial light does count. Five to ten minutes of bright light and if you need extra support that the light in your house is not giving you because you get up before the crack of dawn or much later than the seven to nine in the morning when uh they say it's the safest um the sun's at the right angle to make that vitamin d you can google either sun lamp or seasonal effect disorder light lamps uh at this point i think they're just light bulbs you can screw in so take the additional help if you need it it's very important especially as we move into the darker time of the year Okay, uh, February is always my worst month because it's wet, cold, dark, <laughs> you know, and not a whole lot of sun. So that's when I need that extra support. But, you know, I want you to have it now. Um, all right. Oh, er, I'm going to quote Ernest Holmes at you because I do it every day. I'm a signs of mind minister, so I'm going to do it every day. Open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you that you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around us all the time. It is not a place we have to get to, but it is a state of mind, a state of consciousness that we can learn to create. And if we learn to create it, one, nobody can take it away from us. And two, any place we are can become heaven. And that turns it from what it is to a superpower. Didn't know you were a superhero, but you are in your own life. You are your own superhero. Really, honestly, the best person to save you is you. So, um, okay. Uh, and you can always take Emma's, Emma's advice when you're about creating that heavenly mindset. Look for the good and praise it. Look for the good and praise it. Another way to say that is to count your blessings. And science backs me up. The best way to, to change a grumpy mood is to go and be of service. That's one of the reasons why, um, I found, you know, I went and did my service last night uh, because our guest on the Zoom was 
amazing and personable and wonderful. And he liked my cat. He wanted to know the name of my cat because he knew my cat knew the truth. And it helped. It helped a whole lot. You know, it helped a whole lot. And that's what it takes. Look for the good and praise it. Go and volunteer. Random acts of kindness. Random acts of kindness for everybody, including yourself. Don't leave yourself out of the random acts of kindness. All right, beloveds. Uh, I'm going to take a deep breath here. And uh, we are at the social media part. I remind you that we are Creative Life Spirit Central, Creative Life Spark. I'm your running red Ryan on the social medias that I am on. So I encourage you to take a look at all of that. Um, the Soul Session playlist is absolutely my favorite playlist. It is phenomenal, amazing, wonderful. There are all kinds of people on there. And on both YouTube channels, there is this book called This Thing Called You. You go and ask any signs of my minister, I will almost guarantee you, pretty much 100% of us, um, and if not 100% of us, then darn close to that, This Thing Called You is in our top five books. Always. It's such a good one. And I read it to you because I found out there wasn't an audible copy. No commentary, straight reading. Um, it's a fantastic book. So, uh, and I'm, I'm looking at maybe doing a couple more, uh, some of the old, some of the older stuff, especially if it's hard, hard to get out of print. So I just haven't picked one yet. So I need to do that. All right, beloveds. Um, yeah, now I'm at the part where I get to encourage you. Oh, email info at creativelife.org. Constant contact. Hot links are hot. Uh, now I'm going to encourage you to have a great day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanted day, a wonderful day, an awesome day, an amazing day, a know your truth day, a accept without reserve day, an omnipresence day, an omnipower day, a recognizing who you are day, a be gentle with yourself day, a take care of business day a rest day, a good day. And if that's too much pressure, simply have a day. You are enough just as you are. You are a beloved child of God. And as, as we learned in the reading today, we are spirit in action. We are God in motion. We are brilliant lights, divine sparks, or as Reverend Jesse likes to call us, we're godlings, all right? We are beloved children of God in whom God is well-pleased and well-represented. And that is the truth of our being. So I encourage you to explore that. I encourage you to explore that. All right, beloveds. Uh, Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. with you. I will be back with you around 9 a.m. tomorrow. Take care of yourself. Know that you are loved. And I will see you next time.